Hi guys, uh, this short video is going to deal with how to construct a histogram uh, through Excel. Okay, uh, To construct our histogram through Excel, we need to identify, I suppose, well, we're going to take two steps, an intermediate step. We're going to create frequency distribution first, and then from the frequency distribution, we are going to construct the histogram. Okay, so there's a number of stages that we have to take. Uh, the first stage is, I suppose, we have to identify how many values we have in our data set. So I'm going to just have, a, let's say, data set size here. Okay. Uh, and to calculate the data set size, there is a, I suppose there's a function uh, that we can use in Excel. It's called count. Uh, so I'm going to go into function mode here and the F cell. I'm going to say equals. And I'm going to say count. I see the function count comes up here. If I press tab, it completes it. Uh, the open round brace has has appeared, and now I can actually put in the list of values that I want to count. So I want to count from here, the first value, uh, down to the end of the data set. So I'm going to hold Control, Shift, and then press the down arrow key, which highlights the whole data set. And then finally, I'm going to close off the round brace and hit return which does account for me, there's 2,788 values in this particular data set. Other things that we're going to need to know is we're going to need to know the range of the data set. So we need to calculate the maximum value in the data set. Uh, to calculate the maximum value in the data set, there's a function uh, called max. Uh, once again, to go into function mode, uh, we press equals, followed by the name of the function, which is called max. And uh, I'm going to press the tab button to complete this. And once again, you can see that the that it, it completes and puts it into the mode where it expects, I suppose, the parameters to be passed into the function. Once again, I'm going to highlight the first cell and press Control Shift down uh, and close off the the bracket with an open with an open round closing round brace. I'm going to hit Return, which calculates the maximum value in the data set to be 12.2. I'm going to need the minimum value min. Uh, this is equal to, once again, the function is called min, uh, and I'm going to put in all the data values again. So that gives me the minimum value in my data set, which is 2.8. And now I'll have the range. The range of the data values is simply the difference between the largest element and the smallest element. So this is equal to, well, it's equal to the maximum value, which is 12.2, uh, minus the smallest value, which is 2.8. Okay, so the range of this data set is 9.4. Okay, so while since we're constructing a frequency distribution first, we need to identify how many classes we should have. Okay, so the number of classes is got, is is related to the size of the data set. In this case, we have two thousand seven hundred eighty-eight values in our data set, uh, and really what we need to find is we need to find the first value of k. So let's say here's k, uh, for which two to the power of k uh, is greater than the size of our data set. So actually all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some uh, some values of k here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. Okay? And I'm going to evaluate 2 to the power of k. So I'm going to say this is equal to 2 uh, and I'm going to use the hat symbol for the power function and I want to, it, the first one to be 2 to the power of 1 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the first cell here which represents 1 and that gives me, well 2 to the power of 1 is 2 okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cell and I'm going to drag it all the way down to the end here and it'll apply that formula to all of these other values okay so what we can see is we have a list of numbers here okay uh, now what we need to do is we need to go down through this list of numbers and we need to identify the first number in this list that exceeds 2,788. And the first number in the list that exceeds 2,788 is this number here, 4,096. And so what we know is that we should have, we should have 12 classes in our frequency distribution. Okay. So now we know the number of classes, the number of classes uh, is going to be equal to well, the number of classes is going to be equal to it's going to be equal to that value there, which is which is twelve. Great. Now the class width the class width is simply equal to the range divided by the number of classes, uh, and 
we're just actually going to we're going to add on a little bit more to our range, yeah, just to make sure that we cover the whole data set. Uh, so the class width is equal to let's say the range, which is nine point four. Uh, plus, I'm going to add on 0 0.1. The reason why I'm not adding on 1 here and I'm adding on 0 0.1 is that uh, this this particular data set represents money. And if I add on 1 euro, it'll the range will be too big. Yeah. Okay. So I'm adding on 0 0.1 here. And I'm going to divide that by the number of classes that we have, uh, which is 12, to give me my class width should be 0 0.79, or I suppose rounded, rounded to, let's say, two decimal places. Uh, or let's say we round that to, well, we round that to, we're going to round up, uh, this is going to be equal to, rounded is 0 0.8, 0 0.8, okay? So that's the width of my class, classes in this particular instance. Okay, so we have all our parameters now. We know the size of the data set, the maximum, the minimum value, the range, the number of classes which we identified from this particular table here. Uh, and we also know the class width, which is approximately 0 0.8. So let's construct our let's construct our frequency distribution. <clears throat> so we have a lower bound, and we have an upper bound. Uh, the lower bound, the first lower bound, or the first class. Uh, actually, let me just label each one of these classes: one, two, three, and so on, all the way down. Let me just bring them down here to 12. We need 12 classes. Brilliant. Just center them. Okay. So the first class uh, always begins with the smallest value. So this is equal to the minimum value in our data set. Okay, brilliant. And the upper bound, I suppose the upper bound here, let me just center these, okay. center them. The upper bound of the first class is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to the lower bound uh, plus, plus the class width, which is 0 0.8, okay? Which is the G12 to G11, the G11 cell. Okay. Now, actually, so that gives us our first, our first, our first uh, class from 2.8 up to 3.6. The next class starts at the last class's upper bound, and what I need to add on to this is I need to add on to this once again. I need to add on to this uh, 0 0.8. Okay, and we're going to continue in that fashion, uh, where the lower bound is the same as the previous upper bound. This is equal to 4.4, and this is equal to 4.4 plus 0 0.8, okay? And now I'm going to do this a little bit quicker here. I'm going to say this is equal to 5.2 here, the first upper bound. Uh, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the G11 from the previous cell in dollar signs to keep it absolute. It's an absolute reference and not a relative reference. And I'm going to take this cell here and I'm going to drag it down. You don't have to do this. You can continue with the previous pattern that I that I applied. Just keep adding on uh, the upper bound to the previous lower bound and so on, which gives a value of lower bound of 2.8 in this data set up to 12.4, and 12.4 covers our maximum value here. Okay, brilliant. So <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to count how many values fall into these particular intervals. Actually, I'm going to do a cumulative frequency distribution here. I'm going to count how many values are less than the upper bounds and then I'm going to reverse it uh, by taking away the values in the lower classes. So I'm going to say here this is equal to, I'm going to count if, okay, the range of values I want to count is my data set, okay, so I'm going to count my data set, okay, and I'm only going to count them, okay, sorry, the data set range went in there, followed by a comma, and the criteria I want is if the value in the data set is less than, so I'm going to put this inside quotation marks, if it's less than 3.6, so I'm going to reference that cell and 3.6 here, okay? That will give us the count of values that are in this particular data set range. Now I'm going to keep the data set fixed by putting it in dollar signs, dollar signs around the C's, okay, around the, the column the column label, okay, uh, and that's going to give me a value of 238, brilliant. And I'm going to drag this down to the end, which will calculate the values for all of our values. Yeah, and we have 2788, and we have 2788 values here. So this is the cumulative frequencies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse the process uh, to calculate the actual frequencies. I'm going to say that this cell is equal to this value minus how many values there is in the classes before it, 
okay, which gives us 42. Yeah, and I'm going to drag this up to the top, which gives us our actual frequencies. Okay, now just so that this works out and actually looks 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 okay for us, I'm going to create a label for these, a new label for these lower and upper bounds. I'm going to say that this is equal to the lower bound value and I'm going to put in a quotation mark followed by a space and the word up to followed by a space and a quotation mark followed by and and I'm going to I suppose I'm going to glue onto that this other value here which gives us a label now 2.8 up to 3.6 and I'm going to take that and I'm going to pull it down to the end here to give me my I suppose it gives me my labels for my frequency distribution or my classes. Yeah, so this is closing. Stock price is in here. Right. And then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my frequency column. Okay, let me just center these. I'm going to put in my frequency column, which is these values here. I'm just going to copy them, control C. Uh, and I'm going to paste in the values, paste special. I'm going to paste special, which is I'm going to paste in values, yeah. So that's my, I suppose that's my frequency distribution here now. Okay, brilliant. So if I want to produce a histogram, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight both of these columns here. And I'm going to say insert. And I'm going to go to charts. And I'm going to choose a, a histogram or a bar chart here. Okay, oops. Recommended charts is coming up here. Okay, actually let's get rid of that there. I'm going to go to this small box here, which is uh, insert column chart. Uh, and I'm going to choose the first one, which gives us something that looks like this. And this is our histogram. So once again, uh, we'll need to put in our labels, our axis titles, uh, our chart title. Uh, we probably have to have a look at this guy here, this, this axis here. And uh, maybe what we'll do is right click on that and we'll, uh, I suppose, format the axis. We get a number of options here to format the axis. Now in a second. Uh, and let's just go to size and position again, like our previous chart that we did. Size and position. Size and position. And let's change the angle here to, let's say, minus 50. Yeah, minus 50 is usually pretty good. That gives us that. Excellent. Uh, and that's, well, I suppose this is a bar chart at the moment. Yeah, we probably should make sure that these bars uh that there's no that there's that there's no width between them or gap between them this gap width is down to zero which gives us something like this i suppose we could change the colors of them as well the fill uh vary colors by point will give us a bar chart that looks something like this okay right goal guys i i know that was pretty fast uh but i tried to keep these videos uh short in duration uh, but that's basically the process to construct a to construct a histogram okay obviously you label these particular axes uh appropriately and so on okay so once again thank you for your time